Hey gang, uh, to, in this video I want to look at normal distributions. So if you haven't seen a normal distribution before, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window. Um, and I'm going to have my window go from negative 3 to positive 3. And my y-axis, I'm going to go from negative 0.1 to positive 0.5. And now there is a, an equation for the normal distribution. Uh, it's quite complicated. Um, so usually you don't even see the normal, the equation for it. Um, and a lot of you know, spreadsheets, calculators, other things, um, they kind of do all that work behind the scenes. So in Desmos, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in normal dist, normal dist, okay? and then parentheses, and your standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, so this is what your basic normal distribution looks like. This is what uh, is typically meant when people say the bell curve. Um, so if you if you've ever advocated for uh, grades in your class to be curved, this is typically what was you know often meant by a curve when when teachers would of a class is in the middle here you've got your highest proportion so that would be c's so you'd have a lot of c's and then on each side of that you'd have a few b's and a few d's and then you know way off to the left and right not many a's and not many f's okay um, a lot of you probably wouldn't appreciate a, a true curve for your class because that would mean that you know only one or two people might get a's in the class um, with the normal distribution uh, something that you'll talk about more in statistics classes is, you know, well, how do we, why is it zero for the mean and why is it one for the standard deviation? Um, for this class, we're just going to say that that's your, uh, your mean and your standard deviation for a standard normal distribution. Um, you're probably going to be using your own data and plugging in your own mean and your own standard deviation uh, to make your own normal distributions. But if you take a statistics class in the future, um, that will be explained further. Um, something that we can do with our normal distribution then is we can find the cumulative probability. So that means the probability of something being within that range. So here, right now they've got minimum negative infinity, maximum infinity. So technically this graph does go off to negative infinity and positive infinity. And the area, the shaded area underneath this graph is equal to one, and it will always be equal to one for a normal distribution, okay? But we don't have to go from negative infinity to infinity. We could change this to say, well, maybe I want to know what's the area between negative one and one. So if I had been negative one to one, okay, it just shades that area. And it tells me right over here, 0.68. So one thing that we often say, I'm just going to make a note here, is that 68% of our data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay. This is important because you want to have some idea of being able to work with values quickly um, when you're dealing with a normal distribution. Um, and being able to say kind of approximately, you know, two thirds, which is about 68, about two thirds of responses would be, or two thirds of values in your data set would be within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay. We can also go from negative two to positive two. And notice that's about 95%. So 95%, oops, make a note here. 95% of our data set is within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay. And then one more note here, uh, we'll look at three standard deviations. So from negative three to positive three, it looks like it's all shaded. If I go up here and I change this to be negative 3.5 to positive 3.5, you can actually see that there's a little tiny bit underneath there that's not 
shaded? Well, 99.7%, 99.7% of our data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay. So <clears throat> what this uh, tool can be helpful for is um, when we look at uh, actual data and we want to know like what percentage of people are between um, this height and this height. Heights are something that typically uh, will follow a normal distribution. If we were to take all the heights of the students in your school and, and plot them, the histogram would roughly resemble this normal distribution. Okay? Not this one specifically, it would have a different mean and a different standard deviation. Okay? Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go back to uh, this is a histogram for the ages of the Green Bay Packers players. Now, if we look at this histogram, it doesn't really look like it's that symmetric. It looks like it's skewed to the right. So I just want to show you um, what would happen if we tried to do uh, put a normal distribution over this. So normal dist. And now our mean for the Packers players was 26.067. 26.067. And our standard deviation was 3.371. So I put those on there. And there you can see what, this, uh, what a normal distribution with that mean and that standard deviation would look like. And if I click this box here, that's what the shading would look like. Now we can see that this doesn't fit that well because for data to the left of the graph, it's pretty much all above the curve. And the data below the graph is pretty much all below, except very, at the very end here where it's above again. So this data isn't a, a great approximation. Um, we could, for example, look at, um, so with the Packers players, we had um, four players that were over the age of um, 35. And if we looked at, if we said from 35 to 100, that's basically as far as, I mean, we could go further than that, but obviously no Packers players are 100 years old. Um, it's saying that 0.4% of players would be over, would be 35 or older. Now we know that that's not true, are we've you know calculated we've looked at these um, we can see that the height of each of these two graphs here is about three and a half percent three to three and a half percent so we're talking this should be like six or seven percent and not uh, 0 0.04 or 0.4 percent okay so uh, that doesn't seem to fit very well um, we could do the same thing here um, if we if we looked we said uh, the mean is 26.067. So that means we would expect half of our Packers players to be 26 years or older, and the other half to be 26 years or younger. And if we came over here to our data, um, we can see from the Packers data okay, that we had, um, we had about 18 players that were over 26. And then we had um, we had approximately 42 players that were 26 or younger. So, you know, obviously not half that are less than younger, 26 or younger, and half that are older than 26. Okay. So normal distribution doesn't fit this data very well. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And I'm going to turn the Green Bay Packers histogram off. And I'm going to turn the histogram on for the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, this one looks a little bit more symmetric, maybe a little bit better approximation with the normal distribution. So normal dist. Now our mean for the Brewers was 28.44. And our standard deviation was 3.281. Okay. And oops. And that dis distribution does seem to fit better. Okay? Obviously, no uh, distribution is going to fit perfectly. Okay? But uh, this Packers dist or this Brewers distribution does seem to fit better uh, when we look at Brewers' ages.
So what we can do here is um, we can think about 68% of our data should be within one standard deviation of the mean. So one standard deviation of the mean was 3.28. Uh, so I'll round that to about 3.3. So if I take 3.3 away from our mean, that would put me at 25.14. And if I add 3.3 to my mean, that would put me at 31.74. Okay. And we can see the shading on there. So we're saying that about 68% of Milwaukee's Brewers players are between the ages of 25.14 and 31.74. Now, one thing about histograms, the difference kind of between histograms and a normal distribution, histograms, um, you know, you're plugging these values into specific bins, whereas on a normal distribution, this is continuous. Okay? So this shading could stop at any point that we want it to, whereas a histogram, you have clearly defined bins. Um, so one thing that uh, you might be asked to do is um, to find out what percentage of, of players are between certain ages. So for example, if I want to know what percentage of players are between the ages of 20 and 25, I can just type in 20 for the min, 25 for the max, and I can estimate that to be about 14%, 0.14. Okay? The normal, uh, this is called a normal approximation. Okay? It doesn't fit exactly. But it fits pretty well, and we can use it to approximate the players that are between 20 and 25 years old. Okay. Um, so you could do this with any age range. Um, this distribution is, is going to be very important if you take any further stats class. Um, AP Statistics uh, uses the normal distribution a lot. Um, we're not going to deal much more with normal distributions other than to uh, use it to approximate a histogram that is symmetric um, with a, a single peak in the middle and to use it to find percentiles. Okay? We talked about relative frequency histograms and how they can help us find percentiles. We can do the same thing with uh, normal distributions. So one last thing here with normal distributions. If I wanted to know what percentile I was in if um, I was going to play in the major leagues and I was uh, 28 years old, okay? Well, I can go from negative infinity, I can just type that in, to 28, and it tells me that 44, approximately 44.7%, so we'll round that to 45, about 45% of players are below, are 28 years or below. So if I'm 28 years old, you could approximate my percentile as the 45th percentile. Okay. So we can use relative frequency histograms to help us with percentiles. We can also use normal distribution to help us with percentiles.